देवी भागवतम बुक थ्री चैप्टर टेन ऑन द स्टोरी ऑफ सत्यव्रता जनमे जया सेट ओ महर्षि हु वॉज सत्यव्रता द ब्राह्मिन हुज नेम्स यू हैव जस्ट टेकन इन वॉट कंट्री वॉज हिज बॉर्न एंड ऑफ वॉट नेचर वॉज ही प्लीज डिस्क्राइब ऑल दिस टू मी एंड सेटिस्फाई माई क्यूरियासिटी हाउ डिड ही हियर दैट साउंड आई एंड हाउ डिड ही रिपीट दैट वर्ड ही केम आउट हाउ कम हाउ केम आउट the success to him that illiterate brahmin at that very instant and how is it that that great goddess who is omniscient and omnipresent was pleased with him kindly describe this interesting incident in details suta said vyasa the son of thus asked by the king addressed in the following pure sweet and liberal words Vyasa said here o king you are the best and foremost in the kuru clan what i before heard in the assembly of the munis i am now relating that ancient story highly beneficial to you o best of the kurus once in my peregrinations in the holy places of pilgrimages i came to the naimisharanya forest that highly sacred place frequented by the munis that time there were staying sanaka sanant sanatana and other sons of brahma who were liberated while living i went there and bowed down to the munis and took my seat then the religious conversations ensued there in the assembly when the great sage maharshi jamadagni began to question the munis in the following terms o high minded excellent ascetics and munis there has arisen a great doubt in my mind i am desirous to have that doubt solved in this assembly of the maharishis o all knowing maharishis that have fulfilled your vows o giver of one's honor now my question is this of the following devas brahma vishnu rudra indra varuna fire kuvera wind vishvakarma kartikeya ganesha the sun the two ashwins bhaga pusha moon and the other planets who is the first and best to be worshiped that can easily be served who is very quickly satisfied and grants the desired boons kindly tell me this as early as possible thus questioned by the muni jamadagni maharishi lomasa one in the assembly spoke o jamadagni here in reply to your question the goddess of energy is the best of the devas most excellent and highest to be worshiped those who want welfare they ought to worship this supreme force she is the para prakriti the highest nature the brahma conditioned by maya time space and causation she grants all the desires does good to all pervades everywhere and is the mother of brahma and the other high souled devas she is the first prakriti and is the root of this gigantic tree of universe if any one calls the devi in remembrance or distinctly utters her name she fulfills all the desires of the human beings if anybody worships her she is at once filled with mercy and becomes ready to grant boons o munis how once on a time at Bra- a brahmin uttering one letter of her mystical mantra obtained her grace i am now describing that most auspicious history before you be pleased to hear once on a time there lived in the country of koshala a famous brahmin named devadatta he had no issues and therefore started duly according to the prescribed rules a sacrifice called putreshti for the sake of obtaining children on the banks of the tamasa river tamasa river the brahmin erected a temporary building or an open shed for performing the ceremony and there built an altar and invited the brahmins versed in the vedas and clever in performing sacrificial rites there he placed the fire and began to perform according to the strict rules the putreshti sacrifice in that sacrifice suhotra the best of the munis acted the part of brahma yagna valka acted the part of advaryu brihaspati that of hota paila that of prashtota govila that of udgata and the other munis acted as assistants these all were duly paid their remunerations one of the four priests employed at a soma sacrifice as a superintendent any officiating priest technically distinguished from hotri udgatri and brahman his duty 
was to measure the ground, build the altar, prepare sacrificial vessels to fetch wood and water, light the fire, bring the animal and immolate it, and while doing this, to repeat the Yajur Veda. A sacrificial priest who offers the oblations or one who recites the prayers of the Rig Veda at a sacrifice. One of the four principal priests at a sacrifice, one who chants the hymns of the Sama Veda. The Hotha Govila, the excellent reciter of the Sama hymns, began to sing in accented tones called Swarita. The accents are three, Uddhata, Anuddhata and Swarita and the Rathantara Sama in seven tunes. Then he began to draw breath frequently and consequently there was a break in time in the accent of Govila. Seeing this, Devadatta was angry and immediately said to Govila, Well, Govila, you are the foremost of the Munis and still you are doing your work like a quite illiterate man. I fear obstacles may arise in the getting of my son in this, uh, my sacrifice of Putreshti. Govila then became... Govila then became much enraged and told Devadatta, Your son will be illiterate, hypocrite and dumb. Behold, every being is subject to breathing and respiration. It is very hard to control them. There is no fault of mine in the accents of my songs being thus broken. It is strange that you being intelligent cannot understand this. Being afraid to hear the curse from Govila, Devadatta became very sorry and said, O Muni, I have done no serious offence. Why are you so offended without any cause? See, the Munis are void of anger and they always give delight to others. O best of Brahmans, my offence is very trifling. Why, why have you inflicted on me so, such, so severe a curse? I was already under the mental agony since I had no issues and now you have made me suffer more pain. For the Vedic Pandits declare that it is better not to have any son than to have an illiterate stupid son, the more so when a Brahmin's son is illiterate, he is blamed by one and all. An illiterate son is like a sudra or a beast, he is unfit for any action. O Brahmin, what shall I do with an illiterate son? An illiterate Brahmin is like a sudra, consequently not an object to be engaged in any act of worship or of gift. He is not deserving to do any action. A Brahman bereft of the knowledge of the Vedas, living in a country, is treated as a Shudra by the king of the palace and is liable to pay taxes. Whoever wants to have any fruit in any action will never invite an illiterate Brahman to take his seat in the ceremony relating to the Pitris or the Devas. The king will consider an illiterate Brahman as if a Shudra and will never engage him in any religious ceremony, but will order him to do the work of a farmer in cultivating fields, rather to perform the funeral ceremonies by erecting a kusabata than to engage an illiterate Brahmin for the purpose. One should give food to an illiterate Brahmin just sufficient to fill his belly and no more. If he does not do that, the giver and especially the receiver are subject to go down to hell. Fight to a kingdom where honor is shown to the illiterate stupid Brahmins, where no difference is observed when seeds, worship and gifts are given to various persons, sages should draw their inference how the literate and illiterate persons are treated there. When the illiterate fools become haughty, when they are paid honors and gifts, the literary people, the literary persons should never dwell there. The wealth of the wicked goes to the enjoyment of the bad persons. For the neem trees, for the neem trees, though abounding richly in fruits, are enjoyed only by crows. Again, on the other hand, if the Brahmins versed in the Vedas, study the Vedas even after they have taken their food, still his father and forefathers are happy and play cheerfully in their heavens. Therefore, O Govila, you being the foremost of the Brahmin, who are versed in the Vedas, what have you said just now? See, in this world, death is rather to be preferred than to have an illiterate son. How is it then that you have cursed me that I would get an illiterate son when you are the best one, highly qualified with knowledge? O oh, high-minded one, you are capable to re relieve the distressed. I am bowing down to your feet. Show your mercy and reconsider your curse. Lomas said, O oh, Munis, 
Devadatta, saying these words, fell prostrate at his feet and began to eulogize him in very pitiful words, being very much grieved and with tears in his eyes. Seeing him thus distressed, Govila was moved and with pity. The persons that are noble have their anger satisfied after a short while. The anger of the ignoble lasts for a long time. The water is naturally cool, but it gets hot in contact with fire heat and no sooner the heat is drawn away, water gets again cooled quickly. The merciful Govila then addressed the distressed Devadatta, Your son, though at first illiterate, will afterwards be very learned. The Brahmin Devadatta was very glad on getting this boon. Then completing the sacrifice, rewarded the Brahmins with their due Dakshinas and dismissed them. In due course of time, his fair chaste wife Rohini, like the asterism Rohini, became pregnant. Devadatta performed the Garbhadan and Pumsavan and ceremonies and other purifactory rites duly. He performed the Simantonayana ceremony according to rules and considered his Putreshti sacrifice successful and made various offerings to the Brahmins. It is a ceremony performed on a woman's perceiving the first signs of a living conception with a view to the birth of a son. Parting of the hair, one of the twelve samskaras or purifactory rites, rites observed by women in the fourth, sixth or eighth month of their pregnancy. In the auspicious lagna, when Rohini Asterism was present and in the auspicious day his wife Rohini gave birth to a male child. Devadatta performed the nativities of the newborn child and saw its face. Next, that knower of the Puranas, Devadatta kept the name of the child as Utathaya. When the son was eight years old, Devadatta performed the Upanayana thread ceremony duly. Next, the child was made to accept the vow of Brahmachari and Devadatta made him study the Vedas, but the child could not pronounce a single word and used to sit simply like a stupid boy. Though tried in various ways to read and write, that wicked boy never paid the slightest attention, simply sat idly. Seeing this, his father was very sorry and much grieved. Thus, twelve years passed, yet the boy could not learn how to perform his Sandhya Vandana duly. The rumor went around that Utathya, the son of Devadatta, turned out very illiterate. All the Brahmanas, ascetics and other persons came to learn this fact. Wherever Utathya used to go in any forest on hermitage, the people used to laugh at him, ridiculed his father and mother and began to chide that illiterate son. Thus blamed by father, mother and all other persons, dispassion occupied the heart of Uthaya. Once when rebuked by his father and mother that it was better to have a blind and lame son instead of an illiterate brute, Uthaya took remorse to renunciation and went to a dense forest. On the bank of the Ganges is a beautiful spot free from obstacles. He built a beautiful hut and began to subside on the rocks and fruits of the forest and with a collected mind, having made the excellent vow, I will never speak untruth, and holding the vow of a celibacy, he lived in that beautiful hermitage. Thus ends the tenth chapter in the third skanda of Srimad Devi Bhagavatam of 18,000 verses by Maharishi Veda Vyasa related to the story of Satyavrata. Book 3, Chapter 10, Completed, Srimatre Namaha.